Over the last few years, the world became a very small place for farmers. Every farmer is every day in competition with the best other farmers in the world. We share markets. The logistics make distances very short. And in this process, large corporate groups grew bigger and bigger, and smaller farmers are dropping out of the industry. It's a global phenomenon. This is why it's so important to have a decade of fam family farmers, to mainstream family land-based enterprises in the value chains again. Our organization um, consists of a large number of national farmers' organizations, and family farmers are their members. We are working very hard to show to the world that family farmers are anchoring rural economies. Today we have small towns and villages because they are family farmers. Large-scale farmers, the corporations, they don't use the local accountant, the local lawyer, the local service providers or input providers. They go directly to the manufacturers or to the cities. We also point out that smaller farmers create more jobs than those who have the benefit of scale. And more than anything else, we try to communicate that family farmers anchor a common value system in the world. Values in which the family is the glue of society because farming families live closer to each other. They spend more time in each other's company. They still have time to listen and to talk to each other, which city dwellers do not necessarily have. The United Nations is this unique institution where governments meet and they deliberate on policy issues. So our first expectation is that in this decade, the United Nations and all its agencies will work towards a policy environment which is conducive to the profitability and the sustainability of family farming all over the world. And that they would be able to invest in those areas where farmers are most vulnerable. It's very ironic that some of the poorest people in the world, some of the most needy, are the producers of food and fiber in their countries. And then it's very important that we level the playing fields, that we ensure that global trade and interaction between countries create an environment in which farmers, no matter how big or small they are, can be competitive and can earn a living from agriculture. Everything in this decade of family farming is about communication. And communication is a, is a two-way traffic on the one side, it is for family farmers to communicate the message to those who have lost contact, who are part of the misconnect in the value chain. Yeah, just to show people in the cities that food do not really come from shelves and shops. Two decades ago, everybody still had family, an uncle or a grandfather who was a farmer, but it's no longer the case. But it's also communication the other way around too. It's very important that farmers stay connected with their markets. And the most important person in the life of a farmer is a woman somewhere in a family who decides what her family will eat tonight. And if she was not there, no use that we produce. Now, as technology evolves and picking up speed, it's very hard to keep up. And technology, unfortunately, costs money. There is no way in which we can grow our rural areas in the world without investment. There's no way we will lure investment without investment certainty. And governments must provide that certainty. But for families who must make a living from the soil, it's important that they get investment in their area, in infrastructure, in the development of markets, the linkages to the markets, and in the technology to stay competitive. No family farmer on their own can do this. Governments are not doing it at the moment. That's why people remain poor in rural areas. So we need private sector investment. And it must be lucrative. Uh, capital is as shy as a deer. You scare it and it runs. But if there's certainty, family farmers and the investors can both thrive.